For thousands of years, the British have been using bronze as the primary metal to make tools and jewelry. But most importantly, it was used as a currency for trade. This narrative began to change around the time of 800 BCE. Bronze's value declined, causing a social disturbance and an economic crisis. And this kind of situation in modern times is termed as a recession. What exactly is a recession in today's times? This question has been the subject of much debate among the economists of our time, and with good reason. A recession is a slight decline in a state's economic activity, which can last for months, even years at a time. It's a long-lasting downturn with global consequences. Countless variables contribute to an economy's health, making it extremely difficult to pick out specific causes for this. So, the current definition about when a recession occurs is where there's a negative disruption between the balances of supply and demand. That is, when there's an irregularity between the goods available to buy and how many goods people want to buy. The price of the goods and services sold prompts the country towards an economic decline. An economy's relationship between supply and demand it offers is reflected in its inflation and interest rates. Inflation occurs when products and services become expensive. In other words, the value of money decreases. On the plus side, a low inflation rate is thought to encourage economic activity. But high inflation that isn't accompanied by high demand causes problems for the economy, eventually leading to a recession. On another note, interest rates reflect the cost of taking on debt for individuals and companies. This rate is an annual percentage of a loan that lenders pay to their creditors until they're completely repaid. Low interest rates are a sign that means that companies can afford to borrow a more significant amount of money, which they can then, in turn, use to invest in more products. On the contrary, higher interest rates increase producers' and consumers' costs, eventually slowing down economic activity. Fluctuations in inflation and interest rates give us insights into how well an economy is doing, but we need to know why recessions occur in the first place. The usual suspects are a natural disaster and, of course, war. But other reasons could include geopolitical factors. An earthquake, for instance, can destroy the infrastructure needed to produce valuable commodities such as oil. In a way, the supply side of the economy charges more for all the products oil is used in, discouraging demand and eventually leading to a recession. Some recessions occur in times of economic prosperity and some economists believe that business activity from a market's expansion can occasionally reach an unsustainable level. For example, corporations and consumers may borrow more money, assuming that economic growth will help them handle the additional burden. Still, if the economy doesn't rise as quickly as expected, it may end up with more debt than usual, which can be challenging to manage. To pay these debts off, Funds will have to be redirected from other activities, resulting in reduced business activity. Psychology is also a contributing factor to recessions. Fear of recession can become a self-fulfilling prophecy if it ends up causing people to pull back from investing and spending in response. Producers end up reducing operating costs to help cut down on the decline faced in demand. This leads to a vicious cycle as cuts eventually lower daily workers' wages leading to even lower demand. The solution here will be to make use of policies that help to avoid recession. In harsh economic conditions like these, governments and central banks may print money, increase spending, and even lower central bank rates. Smaller lenders can lower their interest rates and effectively make debt cheaper to boost the amount being spent. These policies aren't sustainable and may eventually need to be reversed to prevent excess inflation. If people become highly reliant on cheap debt, then it could lead to a recession. The Bronze Recession in Britain eventually ended when the adoption of iron helped revolutionize farming and food production. Modern markets are even more complex, making today's recessions even more challenging to figure out. Every recession that comes about provides us with new and improved data to respond to future recessions more effectively.